and join us for a moment of silence and as well the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll continue with roll call. Coy? Here. Lange? Here. Merrill? Here. Clausen? I'm here. Muran? Here. Moaning? Here. House? Here. File? Here. Okay, before we go any further though, I would like to ask everyone to take a look at the fine young uh, students that are sitting in about the fourth row there. Please take note of what is our kids cabinet here or our kids council. Um, I met with them just a little bit earlier and believe me, they got some great ideas and thoughts about this city of Norfolk and want to share those with this council in the future. They're here observing tonight, certainly with, you see the two leads in front there, um, the Canahams who have taken responsibility for bringing them together. So they shared with me tonight, this young group has been invited to go and have a private visit with the governor. They're looking forward to that on May 30th. So um, I'm hoping that even we have some suggestions that they can take down because we don't even have the opportunity for that private um, visit. So congratulations to you and it's good to have you here. So with that though, we're gonna move forward. Um, I'm gonna look at this consent agenda here and ask for approval with some changes to be made here. We're going to remove item eight, item 12, 18 and 26, putting that on the regular agenda as well. Item number 14 too, to be pulled and moved to the regular agenda changing actually that item to read consideration of approval of the plans, specifications, and engineer's estimate on file in the city offices for the concrete improvements 2013-2 of 20th Street project and authorization for the city clerk to advertise for bids. So with those changes, can I ask for approval of the consent agenda of what's left? I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion with a second. If you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Okay. And with that then, I would like a motion for approval of the full agenda with the additions and the changes as made. So move your honor. Second. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Before we go to those, let's do our, our um, special presentations first and then we'll come back to those. We got a few special presentations today. First is Poppy Day for the American Legion Auxiliary. Whereas our community has a continuing responsibility to veterans in veterans homes, hospitals or nursing homes. And whereas the American Legion Auxiliary feels obligated to help provide for the welfare of our veterans and their families of those who made the supreme sacrifice in defense of their country. And whereas the American Legion Auxiliary Unit number 16 of Norfolk has been established to aid veterans. And whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has chosen Saturday, May 18th, 2013 for its annual Poppy Day and has announced that all funds collected will be used to assist the veterans and their families in the Norfolk area. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 18th, 2013, as Poppy Day in the City of Norfolk, Nebraska and surrounding area, and I urge all citizens to recognize this observant and observance and support the veterans. Is there someone here that is going to accept this? You want to come forward and any words that you might want to say or share with me? Let well, me come down there. Okay. We haven't quite mastered this, or I haven't quite mastered this yet. How does this work? But certainly, if you put an email with this team, you know, the issue that I'm going to get to. You know, certainly, you're watching what we're going to do. So if you have any message, you want to share? 
American Legion Auxiliary appreciates the city and the mayor for allowing us to do our little bits, standing in front of some businesses and greeting and meeting people. And we offer them puppies and we explain what we do with the money. And people are very generous. The businesses are very generous. We're using three girls this year who are going to Girl State in Lincoln. So we're excited about that. Uh, everybody's willing to stand out there and do it. And so if, if you want a poppy, see one of us. And if you want to donate to us, that's fine. We are proudly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is National Foster Care Month, Proclamation 4. Whereas the family, serving as the primary source of love, identity, self-esteem, and support, is the very foundation of our communities and our state. And whereas in Nebraska, there are over 4,800 children and youth in foster care being provided with a safe, secure, and stable home, along with the compassion and nurture of a foster family. And whereas foster families, who open their homes and hearts to children whose families are in crisis, play a vital role helping children and families heal and reconnect and launching children in its successful adulthood. And whereas foster homes are licensed for fewer children today than they were prior to 1985, resulting in a greater need for more foster families. And whereas the majority of children in out-of-home care have siblings and agencies often are unable to keep these siblings together. And whereas there are numerous individuals, public and private organizations who work to increase public awareness of the need of children in and leaving foster care as well, as the enduring and valuable contribution of foster parents in the foster care system is only as good as those who choose to be a part of it. Now, therefore, I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2013 as National Foster Care Month and urge all citizens to volunteer their talents and energies on behalf of children in foster care, foster parents, and the child welfare professional staff working with them during this month and throughout the year. Is there anyone here to accept this proclamation? Okay. And next is a proclamation for National Drinking Water Week. Whereas water is our most valuable natural resource, and whereas only tap water delivers public health protection, fire protection, support for our economy, and the quality of life we enjoy. And whereas any measure of a successful society, low mortality rates, economic growth and diversity, productivity, and public safety is in some ways related to access to, <clears throat> access to safe water and whereas citizens are stewards of the water infrastructure upon which future generations depend, whereas citizens of our community are called upon to help protect our source waters from pollution, to practice water conservation, and to get involved in local water issues, now therefore I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, <clears throat> by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim May 5th through the 11th, 2013, as National Drinking Water Week, and I call upon all citizens of the community to help protect source waters from pollution, to practice water conservation, and to get involved in local water issues. Anyone here on behalf of that one? Yeah, just a couple. Um, you know, I think Norfolk has a very, very good water system, and it's basically a lot of it due to the council of this one and also the, the uh, prior, uh, prior ones. Um, you know, with us, with your guys' support, I think that's really made the water system uh, in the, the shape it is. Um, one other thing, real quick, is just that we do are having an, uh, having an open house at the Westwater Treatment Plant Wednesday from 2 p.m. till 6 p.m. So if anybody come out, you know, um, we're going to give water plant oh, tours, and you know, if you have questions about the water system, uh, we hope you come out. Thanks. Thanks for being here, and certainly this council recognizes the fact that it wouldn't be what it is without you and the staff there. So thank you for what you do, and please pass it on. <clears throat> Next, we have a proclamation for Police Week and Peace Officers Memorial Day. 
Whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which it falls as Police Week. And whereas the members of the Norfolk Police Division play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and the freedoms of the citizens of Norfolk. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their police department, and that members of the Norfolk Police Division recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the men and women of the Norfolk Police Division unceasingly provide a vital public service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim May 12th through the 18th of 2013 as Police Week in the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, and the surrounding area, and further call upon all citizens to observe Wednesday, May 15th, 2013, as Peace Officers Memorial Day, in honor of those law enforcement officers who, through their courageous deeds, have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty. <clears throat> Chief, are you coming forward on this one? successes that we have uh, are through no small contribution and cooperation of the citizens of this community. We could not do what we try to accomplish without uh, the help of, of those citizens. And so we never forget that and we are very appreciative of the fact that uh, we have a community like this in which to work. And it uh, continues to be a pleasure and uh, we hope to be able to continue to serve it to the best of our ability. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> okay. And that's it. Last but not least, gentlemen, proclamation, whereas Peterson Ag Systems Incorporated is a Norfolk-based firm and is an agricultural equipment supplier of irrigation and green handling products with outlets in Osmond, Partington, Fremont and Ottawa, Iowa, and whereas Henry Ashoff and Keith Ween, President and Vice President, respectfully, of Peterson Ag Systems Incorporated, has been named the Nebraska Small Business of the Year for 2013 by the United States Small Business Administration. <coughs> and whereas these two men were nominated for the honor by Lauren Kuchera, Director of Nebraska Business Development Center, Wayne, Nebraska, have been invited to attend the culmination of the Nebraska of the National Small Business Week, June 21st, 2013, in Washington, D.C., and will compete against candidates from all 50 states and territories for the selection as the SBA National Small Business Persons of the Year. And whereas Peterson Ag System Incorporated was chosen as the state's top small business based on its history as an established business, growth in number of employees, increase in sales and unit volume, response to adversity and innovation in products and services offered, and whereas, since buying the business 13 years ago, Ashoff and Ween have grown the company from 11 employees to 41. The company hires 15 to 20 part-time employees during the summer and plans to hire an additional 10 to 12 employees over the next 12 to 18 months. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, by the power vested in me, do hereby give recognition and congratulations to Peterson Ag Systems Incorporated for the Nebraska Small Business of the Year for 2013 award given by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Gentlemen, congratulations. Do we have... I don't. Hang on. Thank you.
data in it is. Gentlemen? Okay. We got you now. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, thank you for this recognition. Um, we, Keith and I, we couldn't do this without all of our all of our quality employees, and uh, this award is for them as much as it is for us. And uh, you know, um, always done business by the golden rule: take care of the people, take care of the customers, take care of the employees, and they'll take care of you. And uh, because of that, we've been very successful, and uh, the future is very bright. And uh, we are going to be attending the, the conference in Washington, D.C. And so hopefully when we come back from that, we'll stop back in and report how it goes. So thank okay. you very much, and we appreciate the recognition. You're very welcome, and thank you. A prime example of what um, small business can mean to a community. And congratulations, guys. It's quite an honor. So, Okay. Next we're going to have a... That's it for proclamations, right? I got them all. Okay, presentation by representatives from the downtown vehicle parking district. Who's speaking? Uh, come on forward. We'll let you introduce yourself and, and present for us. Mayor, council, thanks for uh, having me here this uh, evening. My name is uh, James Wobblehorst. I'm a financial advisor for Northwestern Mutual. They're in Norfolk and a board member for the vehicle parking <laughs> district. Um, here basically this evening to take about an hour and a half of your time <laughs> to read through this parking plan. So if any of you needs a bio break, feel free to take one. Actually, um, hopefully we're gonna take about five or six minutes, if that's okay with you, and then go into any needed Q&A if, if possible or necessary. Um, many of you have heard that there has been growth in the downtown over the last decade, and that has created a good problem. But nonetheless, it's a problem in the area of parking. Uh, we've realized that there's become a need because of the growth downtown. We've done a lot of studies over the last several years, and uh, it's quite phenomenal. Don't know if you knew this or not, but there are currently 144 different businesses and entities operating in the vehicle parking district that comprises almost 850 different individual employees and tenants that are operating in a five block area. Just FYI, the vehicle parking district is basically from 1st Street to 8th Street, including Main Street, Brosh, and also Madison Avenue. Okay, is our, is our district. As you know, we serve as an advisory board for you. And so what we have done over the course of the last year, it's been quite cumbersome, we're like a slow moving turtle. We've comprised a parking plan for you to consider uh, for the downtown that we think would be beneficial for the tenants as well as for the employees. So I'm gonna take a minute and just read through that plan briefly. We've summarized the 50 page document into two pages for you, okay? Um, the purpose of this plan is to provide organization for parking in the downtown and give businesses and residents in the downtown a parking enforcement tool to utilize as needed. The plan is designed to provide a designated parking area for all employees and residents in the downtown and allow for customer parking in the spaces closest to the entrances of their respective businesses they are patronizing. This policy will be reviewed for revision by the VPD board annually or as needed. Parking will be provided for customers, employees, and residents in the downtown as follows. Customer parking, number one. Customer parking is free with no cost or fee of any kind to customers. 
Customer parking will be permitted on all streets in the downtown and in those areas in parking lots marked or set aside specifically for customers. Customer parking in the parking lots will be clearly marked with white striping and green signage that clearly provides information on the color coding plan used for marking customer parking and employee resident only parking. Number two part of the parking plan is employee and resident parking. Employee and resident parking is provided with areas set aside in parking lots for which a permit per parking space must be purchased. Employee and resident parking will be off street parking. This off street parking for employees and residents will be in permit required parking areas of designated parking lots in the downtown vehicle parking district I alluded to earlier. Employee parking areas in these lots will be clearly marked with yellow striping and red signage clearly des designating these areas as reserved for employee permit parking only. Resident parking areas in these lots will be clearly marked with the blue striping and blue signage clearly designating these areas as reserved for resident permit parking only. Employees and residents will pay parking fee and receive a permit tag to hang on the rear view mirror of their vehicles. Permit tags are required to be clearly visible at all times with employees and residents when using the required parking spaces. Employees and residents are allowed to park in downtown spaces other than their designated areas when they are customers or patronizing a local business or entity. Number three, employee and resident parking rates. Parking fee rate will be effective for one year periods of time and will be set or renewed annually by the Downtown Vehicle Parking District Board, an advisory recommendation board to the City of Norfolk. The annual rate is as follows. It's $15 a quarter or $55 per year. It essentially breaks down to $5 a month. If you pay annually though, we're only gonna charge you 55. You get a little bit of a deal when it comes to that. Um, Anyone interested in purchasing a permit should contact the city of Norfolk. Downtown businesses and residents located within the VPD boundaries will be given first priority for space in the vehicle parking district owned lots. Enforcement, getting to the final part of this today. Vehicles parked in customer parking areas for more than two hours whether on street or off street or in reserved employee resident parking will be, giving, will be given a courtesy card for first time offense. The courtesy card has information reminding the driver of the vehicle not to park in the customer employee resident parking area and provides contact information for obtaining a parking space and parking permit in the downtown. Vehicles that continue to park in free customer or employee parking after receiving a courtesy card notice on their vehicle will be ticketed by the Norfolk Police Department. All businesses in the downtown are provided courtesy cards to place on vehicle windows and, and are on the reporting agents to contact Norfolk Police Department to report <coughs> vehicles that are repeat offenders. Hours of enforcement, employee and customer. Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is when it's enforced in the vehicle parking district. Again, that's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Resident, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Residents in the downtown have a need to be able to access their homes quickly and efficiently, so we are allowed for that to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All parking is open parking is not subject to the parking reorganization plan for hours prior to 6 a.m. or after 6 p.m. Monday through Friday or any hours on Saturday and Sunday as well. Parking on any downtown streets will not be permitted between the hours of 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. as is the current case. In case of snow emergency, the city of Norfolk wide parking regulations will be enforced in the downtown. And finally, customers that are ticketed. The first reported parking violation any vehicle receives while parked in two hour limit parking or employee parking area in the downtown will have a fine of zero dollars. If someone is accidentally caught in that fishnet as a customer, the first fine is essentially a warning that carries a burden of zero dollars. These violations will be recorded by the Norfolk Police Department like any warning ticket would in the city of Norfolk. All other tickets received after that will carry a fine of $25 each. This rate may be adjusted by the vehicle parking district 
This is to minimize the chance that any customer in the downtown will pay for a parking ticket received in the downtown is why the first warning is issued. So essentially that is our summary of the document. At this point in time, I would invite any of you to, if you have any questions, I will attempt to answer them as possible. So if you buy an annual pass and you're a resident down there, does that pass go with the property or does it go with the person? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, my understanding of that, Mr. Merrill, is that it goes with the property. Okay. So that that way, if a tenant changes, sure. hands the landlord, can move it around. Great. Thank you. I guess I, I had the privilege of working retail in my, in my illustrious career. And, uh, <laughs> but I did have a manager at one time that said, if you have to walk past a customer's car to get to work, you're too close. So I applaud you guys uh, on that aspect. I guess the one question I would have is the fines, do they go back to the parking district or do they go back to the city? My understanding of that, Mr. Shukai, you might be able to help me, is that those actually do go to the, we are an entity of the city, so I believe that they do go into the city. Incorrect. Incorrect. <laughs> there you go. Actually. I knew I could succeed in putting my foot in my mouth actually, at least once. Actually, all of the, the city doesn't get any of the fines under a provision of the Nebraska Constitution. All fines go to the, uh, go to the public schools. So, and that doesn't matter if you're paying parking tickets or if you're paying uh, speeding tickets or, or what else. There is a, there is a violations bureau. You're not all together wrong. There's, there's a violations bureau where there's a small amount that's kept uh, for the administration of that, which is authorized, and then the rest of that money is turned over to the public schools. Thank God. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that was one of the main reasons behind this is we, won't, we believe that, uh, as Mr. Ashoff mentioned earlier, you build businesses around employees and then your customers and clients, and we wanted easy access for our customers and clients downtown. I mean, how is it a bad thing to make it easier for people to shop in downtown, which we believe is a vibrant part of the city of Norfolk? Any other questions? So it is that shopper that's downtown and I stop and I park in front of your business. Yes. And then I continue on down and I go into Cooper Farms and I go into and I go into two hours is my limit. That's correct. So I better move my car after a bit. That's correct. Yep. If okay. you decide that you want to move down the street a couple of blocks and uh, it's not as nice out and you move your car, it's going to happen conveniently. If not, you, you may have positive. to choose to yes. move your car. <laughs> that's correct. Okay. Yeah. And I believe that's actually current city code. I could be wrong again, might be sticking my foot in my mouth, but I believe that is current, that there is a limited amount of time in the vehicle parking district that customers or employees are supposed to be parking there right now. Correct. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Put that one on the record, please. Wow. I don't think the prize is any prizes. Yeah. 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 Great any, question, Mayor. Well, any other questions at all? Just just move your car, but keep shopping. Yes. Yeah, we would encourage that. You stated there were 850 people. Yes. Yep. There are up. There are almost 850. It's about to our exact yeah. calculations, 844 tenants or employees currently in the VPD. In your estimate, how short of parking are we downtown, or is it fairly decent? I mean, I, I guess. Yeah, well, I came prepared for that. Um, there are approximately 1,300 private or public parking stalls in our district. That is off-street parking. So that includes my business, for example. I have 10 spots behind my business that is not public parking. It is reserved for just my employees or partners at the, at the uh, business. Well, there are 1,300 of those spaces between parking lots that the VPD and city own and then privately owned lots in our district. On street parking, there is 418 stalls. 418 stalls is what there is. So some of the issue is that, for example, in front of Bank of the West and Salvation Army, there's a large parking lot there that has approximately 150 stalls. But that's underutilized for the rest of the district simply because it's not necessarily in a central location to where a lot of the other businesses are. So we're finding a need that there's a lot of condensing, if you will, in certain parts of the district where it's not evenly dispersed. That's where there's a little bit more of a need for a parking plan and to free up on-street parking for customers. Okay, any other questions for James? Great presentation. Thank you for your time. Hey, you're welcome. Appreciate and we're glad you're here. So 
Thanks for your efforts on this, and certainly we will um, advise all citizens they can give you a call if they have further questions or suggestions. All right. <coughs> now, shall we go back to the consent agenda here? And let's see. Let's take item number eight, which is consideration of rejecting all bids received for Woodland Park, the Flume Project that was before us. Do I have a motion? <clears throat> Mayor and for Council. Con for consideration? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking for a motion. For I'll make the motion. All right. We'll listen to your discussion now, sir. All right, Mayor. Thank you. We're going to just move forward. Since we were able to install the, <coughs> the regulating valve in the current uh, sewer pit that is in between uh, City of Norfolk and Woodland Park, um, our water and sewer staff was able to design and build and then implement that uh, regulating valve, which has been in the news uh, recently. So we have no need to move forward with a new pit of our own to install the new partial flume and or the regulating valve. So kills two birds with one stone, so we're in good shape there. It's kind of a win-win situation, so we don't have any need to move forward with this bid and uh, install that new pit or expend those dollars. Okay. Any questions? Questions at all, Council? If not, then let's We move. did the okay. design work in-house on that. Yes, we did. Okay. Thank you. Let's vote. <clears throat> all Council members voting in the affirmative. Okay, and moving to number 12, consideration of approval of a resolution number 2013-11, approving the use of a portion of land owned by the City of Norfolk to be used for construction, operation, and maintenance of a transportation trail facility as part of the Nebraska Department of Roads Project ENH-59, identified as the Elkhorn River Trail. Your Honor, I'd move approval of resolution 2013-11. Second. Okay, we have a motion with a second. Dennis, are you going to give us a little information? Yes, this, this is basically a right-of-way item uh, for the trail project from 13th Street to 1st Street along the north fork of the Elkhorn River. It's a project that we've got some enhancement funds that are federal funds that come through the Department of Roads. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration requires that, well, even though it's city-owned property that we dedicate, the area where the project that they're funding for use for the life of the, the facility, they're estimating 25 years for the trail. So they require that the council dedicates that particular piece of property to use for the trail for the next 25 years. Wow. It's like an easement. Okay. So Dennis, is that something I have to readdress in 25 years? Is that your? The way you see it, I mean, it's a 25 year timeline, or is 20, it just something that'll go away? At the end of 25 years, I'm guessing that uh, either the trail will be continued to be maintained and still be viable, or it will have a new use. Um, but you're committed to keeping the trail there and in passable condition for the next 25 years. Beyond that, it will be there and and future, future folks will make that determination as to whether that continues to be the highest and best use for that piece of property. It's basically protecting their investment. They're protecting their investment. Very similar to what we had to do for the trail improvement uh, portion in Skyview. Hmm. So, Tennessee. Uh, the layout that's in the exhibit that's fairly close to how it's going to look that way for anybody that's interested in the from the public as how it's going to meander somewhat yes uh that is uh those plans are 90 percent complete uh, and that's just uh an area outline in the the plans that we've got in our into the department of roads for review at this point in time in fact i think they got mailed in today and the um projected construction cycle on it 14 or 15 or um our goal is to get it obligated 
in the federal highway system by October 1 of 2013, which means it has to be all the T's crossed and the I's dotted by about the 15, between the 15th and the 20th of September of this year. So uh, we hope to to do that, and if we do, then it will be, and it at the point in time it's obligated, it will be in a form that it can go to a to a levy. Department of Roads will let the project and they will have the control as to which specific letting it uh, hits. But getting that late in the year, it would be construction starting in the uh, spring of 2014 and hopefully uh, completed by then, by the end of that construction season. Thank you. Anyone else, council, that may have questions or? Dennis, appreciate the explanation. If no, no further questions. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. All right, next we're looking at item number 14. And again, we're looking for consideration of a, whoops, yeah, a, nice, consideration of approval of the plan specification and engineer's estimate on file in the city offices for the concrete improvement 2013 2 20th Street project and authorization for the city clerk to advertise for bids. I would offer the motion, Your Honor. Second that. We have a motion and a second to approve. Again, Dennis, are you speaking to this? I'll speak to it. Uh, this is a reconstruction of 20th Street from just south of Paswalk Avenue or south of the drainage that's south of Paswalk Avenue, south to about the entrance to the motels on the west side of the street there. Uh, totally remove the street, uh, make some storm sewer improvements, uh, those types of things, uh, funded with the uh, CHAP dollars, um, be on the, uh, uh, try to get it for approval at a bid on the first meeting in June. Uh, the modification that was, that occurred is we were trying to get some panel replacement on Sunset Circle and on 27th Street, uh, just ran out of time and don't have those plans uh, completed tonight, so I thought it would be best to wait a couple of weeks on those and move forward with those as well. Okay, and again, thanks for the explanation. Questions, Council? Okay, hearing none then, please vote. All Council members voting in the affirmative. Next, we'll jump to Item 18, consideration of approval of the request from the Indoor Rec Task Force for a $10,000 financial commitment to assist with the implementation and the delivery of a feasibility study for new indoor sports complex in Madison County. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second that, Your Honor. Okay, we have a motion with a second. You wanna to speak to that, Kim? You wanna come forward and state your name for us? and. My name is Kim Kwapnowski, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have in regards to the indoor recreation feasibility study. Um, I will tell you that it is a joint effort with public and private dollars. We have raised um, $20,000 privately to help um, offset the costs of the feasibility study. Um, Madison County has also given $10,000 for that as well. So um, we, would, we have some great partners and um, I think it's an awesome opportunity to look at this and um, see if it's a possibility for our community. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Kim? We got her here. Um, sure, I would. Um, with this feasibility study, are they gonna be kind of scoping the size and spec of what would be Right. What you'd kind of need. Right. Um, with the feasibility, they'll look at, yeah, the financial component and then also location. They'll talk about location. It is a six phase feasibility study. So um, they will answer, yeah, questions to sure. that effect. Yes. Okay. Kim, just quickly, it might be beneficial. I think the important part of this is there has been a lot of discussion in the lead last years about wh whether it's the YMCA or whether it's private that has had a lot of conversation about how it is that we can take advantage of maybe efforts together to make this happen. The college, um, you might wanna give just a brief history. And Yes, um, 
there, this has been talked about for the last year, and what's been great about it is that um, everyone has been at the table, from the YMCA to the Northeast Community College to um, Divots, um, they've all been, all been out there, as well as the hospital. Um, the partners currently, I'll just read through, that um, are a part of this is the Norfolk Family YMCA, Northeast Community College, Newcore Bar Mill, Newcore Volcraft, Newcore Cold Finish, Newcore Dealing Detailing Center, Bernie and Sue Otten, Dinkle Implement Company, Beckenauer Construction, Coppola and Rocky Attorneys, Faith Regional Health Services, Norfolk Iron and Metal, Tim Brumgard, and Jim Bradford Jr. So we have a great core group um, in helping fund this feasibility study um, to uh, promote this, so I think it's great. Okay, any other questions, Council? Did you mention how long the study would take, Kim? Six months. Six months, okay, thank you. More for Shane, we're looking at pulling these funds out of recreation or we have some place to go for these? Or? Special studies line item in the administration budget that we pulled the dollars out of that line okay. item. Good question, Jim. Okay, any further questions? If not, please vote. <clears throat> Thank you, Kim. Thank you. All <clears throat> council members voting in the affirmative. Okay, one other. Item number 26, consideration of approval of the LB840 application for Peterson Ag Systems for up to $60,000 with the terms to be determined upon written agreement. Again, a motion if I could please. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion with a second. Um, <coughs> Courtney, are you talking to this for us? Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. I'm Courtney Klein, Economic Development Director for the City. Um, and you're aware of Peterson Ag, as we just had them up here for a well-deserved proclamation um, on being Nebraska's Small Business of the Year, um, recognized by the Small Business Administration. What we are looking at here, they're hoping to expand um, and build a headquarters here in Norfolk. Um, they're looking at a few different properties um, at present. They're hoping to bring on a number of employees, but are committing to at least five, and these are good paying jobs, ranging anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 a year. Um, we have met with them as staff and reviewed um, all of the information that we would need for an LB840 application. Um, what they'd be adding in payroll would be anywhere from $200,000 to $240,000 thousand um, dollars with the addition of these staff and they're looking at additional staff as well um, the economic development subcommittee of the council met to discuss an extension of LB840 dollars um, at this point we don't know where their headquarters would be located um, we've let them know that uh, for them to qualify for LB840 dollars it would need to be within the two mile zoning jurisdiction of the city um, so at this point what we're off what we're asking the council is authorization to extend um, <coughs> up to $60,000, which would be 25% of that $240,000 in additional payroll um, in LB840 funds uh, to the business if they locate within the two mile zoning jurisdiction of the community. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. <coughs> any questions at all, council? Obviously, we've charged you to get out there and help them find, right? Yes. All right. Continue your efforts. Thanks, Courtney. All right. Thank you. All right. If no further questions, then let's vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. <coughs> okay. Now we're going to move on to public hearing. Public hearing regarding performance of the Nebraska Department of Economic Development. CDGB project number 11-ED001, Premier Senior Marketing, as required by the CDGB Funding Programs Projects. Mr. Higginbotham. Uh, yes. First of all, nope. I better open the public hearing. I'm sorry. And we'll let you fill us in. Let me sign in here real quick. Thank you. Do you know where to come get me? You see how much better I'm getting at that CDGB? Yes. CDBG? <laughs> 
Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm a heck of a As doctor. you all remember, uh, oh, gosh, a couple years ago maybe already, uh, we initially had the original public hearing on this block grant for this project. Uh, as the mayor stated, uh, federal funds require a second public hearing sometime throughout the project. Uh, so we're here to do that. I uh, just want to point out, it, it's written in the, uh, in the uh, public hearing notice. Uh, to date, you know, there's been a little over $3.2 million of investment on that corner. Uh, I'm sure you've all driven by there. It looks very nice. There's been ribbon cut, probably an open house. I mean, so it's been a, a tremendous asset to the community. Um, $500,000 uh, $500, of that uh, 3.2 is the block grant. Uh, those dollars will be uh, is a loan. Those dollars will be paid back to reloan out to other businesses for expansions. Um, as you all know, LB840 dollars are in there. So, um, as of December 12, 2012, they've uh, hired 25 new jobs above and beyond the 50. So they're above the job creation requirements. Um, and also here recently in the last month, uh, the Department of Economic Development has been out to monitor the project. Uh, and there's uh, everything's fine and perfect. So, here to answer any questions about that, if, if there are any from the council or the public. Council, any questions for Tom? Okay. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate your being here. As this is a um, public hearing, is there anyone in the audience that wants to come forward and may have questions or um, concerns? We're sure here to. I guess, Mayor, I'd just like to make a statement that this is actually the first LB840 project that we have, and people out there have been asking about where are the jobs from the LB840. This is a perfect example. They've went above and beyond our expectations. So uh, I hope this is just a seed for the future moving forward. But people need to appreciate the work that has been done to to accomplish where we're at and. Hopefully, like I said, just a seed to keep moving forward. So, yeah, it certainly has made a difference on a corner in Norfolk, Nebraska. So it's a, a work of art. Is there anyone else that wants to speak to this? If not, any discussion further by the council at all? Hearing none. Yeah, there's nothing that you have. Okay. All right. Then I will close the public hearing. And we'll move on to um, the regular agenda, looking at consideration of ordinance number 5253, amending section 13-113 of the code to change street vendor and temporary merchant permits from three month permits to annual permits. Your Honor, I'll introduce ordinance 5253 on first reading. Second that, Your Honor. All right, we have a motion with a second. <coughs> right. Are you talking to this? Yes. I can. Well, or I, I note but that you are, sir, so I'm going to ask you to. This is, this is really kind of a house cleaning thing to uh, make some consistency where uh, other similar permits are, other similar permits are for a, for a year basis uh, on an annual basis. And so this would just coincide with that and help us with, the, uh, with, with making the fee ordinance uh, compatible with the, those other provisions. So housekeeping item, I guess, would be the best way to characterize it. Appreciate that. So that being a housekeeping item, does anyone have any questions or concerns, comments on this? If not, Beth, do you have a short title for us? An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to amend Section 13-113 of the Official City Code to change street vendor and temporary merchant permits from three-month permits to annual permits to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. All right. Please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative ordinance 5253 carries on first reading. Your Honor, I move we suspend the rules and pass ordinance 5253 on second and third. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion with a second to suspend the rules and pass on second and third. Hearing no further discussion, let's vote on that. All council members voting in the affirmative ordinance 5253 carries on second and third. All right. 
Next would be consideration of approval of the comprehensive revitalization needs assessment strategy study completed by the Northeast Nebraska Economic Development District and approval to move forward with applications for the next three phases of the grant. Again, I need a motion, please. Your Honor, I move consideration of approval of the comprehensive revitalization assessment Sorry. strategy. Okay, motion with a second. Um, is that you, Beth? Ah, oh, Tom, hey, you're still here. I'm still here. Okay, me. sorry. Um, in your board packets, there should be an executive ah. summary. Um, and also, uh, we there's a big study. I'm not sure if the city uh, staff has provided that to you, but uh, it, you will be able to look at that. It's uh, about an inch thick. Um, I do want to preference, if you read the executive summary and the study, uh, there's a reference to a lot of the 2000 and census information. And the reason we did not use some of the 2010 is because it was unavailable um, at the block group level. If you look at the executive summary, our target area is indicated, uh, you know, certain areas of the community. We couldn't get down to that block group level. Uh, the Census Bureau did not release some of that data. Um, so HUD is uh, appealing why they didn't. So hopefully, eventually we'll get that data. but. That's uh, why. So HUD's working on uh, to get some of that information. But I do want to point out a couple of things. If you look at page three of the study, you know, this uh, project started back in 2005 with a study and then three phases of money to do hard cost work, an update to the study, three more phases of work, and now we're doing another study so we can move forward to get more money to do projects. Uh, th those requirements by the state of Nebraska. Um, on page three of that executive summary, just want to point out some of the highlights. You know, there's been over $2.4 million of various improvements in the targeted area through the first six phases of this, of, of this work. Um, 17 whole uh, vacant properties have been uh, acquired, demolished, and cleared. Uh, partnering with NeighborWorks, Habitat for Humanity, and local developers, nine homes have been reconstructed. Um, eight businesses downtown have received facade improvements, and the city has done uh, all kinds of uh, infrastructure work, alleys, uh, sidewalks, and those kind of things. Um, and we've done some owner-occupied rehab in the, in the area. Um, I'll skip back to page seven. Uh, just highlight real quick some of the, uh, we started out, we did some, uh, Survey Monkey online surveys uh, for the for the folks that live in these areas and the, the partners that work in those areas and the city staff. On page seven, you can see some of the priorities uh, from the citizens: uh, available jobs, number one, streets, two, housing disrepair, three, additional downtown housing, and youth center. Um, although available jobs and youth centers, and I hate to tell the kids here today. But the CDBG program does not do uh, youth center, so there's, but we wanted to bring that to your attention. It was a high priority, so we'll work with the city staff on other avenues to solve those issues. Um, city staff priorities, uh, also job creation, street and housing. And then we kind of summarized uh, uh, the priorities, a uh, combination of the both. So number one priority is streets, number two is housing, and then additional downtown housing also. I'll skip to page nine. Um, we met with the city staff. As you'll see, uh, the city staff provided a wide range of uh, infrastructure projects to be uh, implemented over the next three phases. I'm also working with the city staff and, and uh, looking at the uh, survey results. Uh, there's a need out there for some rehabilitation. So we're gonna try to do some rental rehabilitation on single family dwellings and multifamily. And then also, there's a huge need still for continued downtown facade improvements, so we'll use a little bit of the money for downtown facade improvements. Uh, there's a timeline there. Uh, phase one is uh, June of 13 through September of 14, so we're looking at coming back here in the next month uh, to hold a public hearing on phase one, uh, applying for uh, the grand dollars. Um, each phase has an estimated $150,000, and then you'll see phase two and three and to uh, take us all the way into January 2017. Um, on page 11, you can kind of see a sample budget. Uh, there's $150,000 of these funds available for uh, the, each three years. Um, so you can kind of see how an estimated way to break this out. Uh, this requires dollar for dollar match. So the city could do some street improvements 
and if they met the dollar for dollar, we're looking at $88,000 worth of improvements. Uh, we're looking at two single family or multifamily rental units. Uh, risk uh, with that, depending on if they're built prior to 78, we're going to have some lead based paint things and then commercial rehabilitation downtown uh, 37 5 that is uh, we can only use 25 percent of the grand dollars so that's 25 percent of the 150 and you'll see on 12 and page 13 kind of a continuation of what of what those phases may or, or may not look like but as we work uh, toward the grant uh, application deadlines we'll work with the city staff on okay if we're going to do streets we're going to do these streets you know from here to there and uh, identify more specifically when we come to that application stage. Um, I do want to point out too, the very last page of the uh, executive summary is a map of the uh, study area. Um, because of that census hiccup, uh, the state of Nebraska did some estimates and based on those estimates, uh, these areas that are in red or pink or whatever you want to call that are the low to moderate income areas. Item uh, neighborhood or census area block number two is new to this study. Uh, based on those estimates, uh, the state of Nebraska says that's 55.98% uh, of the median income. So any area that's 51% or over, we can include. Um, some of those uh, other ones that are 42 and 48, number four and five, are already included in the old studies as a as a overall area this area meets that 51 percent so but I just want to point that out that we got a new area there number two that we're looking at during the study phase so it was great project uh, it was great working with the uh, citizens they had a couple town hall meetings in your fine building here and working with the staff to identify projects so we're looking forward to coming back to uh, apply for the next hundred fifty thousand dollars to get some stuff done so any questions about the study and feel free, I know it's a, a lengthy uh, executive summary and then the other study, you know, so feel free to, if you got questions down the road, give me a call. I think you just um, answered one that I was, as you look at the multiple family housing rehab, two of them. You made the comment, though, that it was great working with staff to make determination on. So that's between you and the staff to come with recommendations on that? Is that? Yeah. What? <clears throat> on the okay. on the activities yeah yeah uh -huh. you know we pull you know there's just certain things that you can spend this money on right you know that's why i said you know we can't use these dollars on you know to as a loan to a business to create jobs like we did premier senior marketing or we can't use you know there's just certain activities so like the youth center we can't use these monies to build a new youth center so based on those survey results and the and working with the city staff you know we've identified those needs and there's a need out there working with the housing agency sure you know that they're doing a lot of owner occupied rehab you know but there's a huge need out there for rental rehab whether that's multifamily or single family so the so the staff fig, you know thought that you well I guess I should also point out but because the city has a current <clears throat> owner occupied rehabilitation single family grant to take care of those that will utilize some of these dollars to see if we can take care of some of those rental properties Great. So, any other questions for Tom at all? Tom, when are the um, when does the application process start for these this the first round of grants? I believe is due right at the beginning of June, and sometime in June. So we'll probably be back here at the June first June meeting for that public hearing. Okay. Appreciate it. You might go back and, and talk to those young people and tell them to take the message to the governor since they got that private. Uh, meeting with him where maybe it should be considered those youth centers. So we should. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion at all? If not, um, are we ready to vote for approval of the comprehensive revitalization needs assessment? Please do. <laughs> all council members. All council members voting in the affirmative. Okay, finally, we have consideration of resolution number 2013-13, rescinding the program guidelines and the procedures for the City of Norfolk Economic Development Program. I'll introduce resolution 2013-13. Second it. Okay, a motion with a second. Courtney? Good evening again. <coughs> um, as a bit of background on this, Back in May of 2010, 
the voters of this community approved LB 840 uh, for use by the community for economic development purposes. Subsequent um, to the voters approving an economic development plan for the community, the council adopted program guidelines for the program, and those program guidelines restricted um, the use of LB 840 uh, beyond what all of the uses that were allowed for in the voter approved plan. Um, economic development came under the city approximately a year ago and we've been taking a look at how best to utilize LB 840 dollars. Um, we were looking at the guidelines and realizing that under the plan we had some additional options but our guidelines were uh, restricting us um, and not allowing us to use the plan um, to its fullest capabilities. We've been taking a look at the guidelines to see if there were some way that we could modify them to give us additional flexibility um, in the use of these funds. Um, in that process, I asked other communities for examples of their guidelines and realized that many communities did not have guidelines in place, which caused me to wonder, why do we have guidelines in place? And do we need to have guidelines in place? Um, so with much discussion among staff and with the Economic Development Subcommittee, what we are recommending is that rather than restricting ourselves with the guidelines, that we just go back to the voter approved plan and have that govern our activities. Now internally, we'll, we'll have those former guidelines sort of guide us as we go along, but they'll be informal rather than formally adopted guidelines. Some examples that I might share with you at present, the guidelines allow us to give funds, um, say to a company like Peterson Ag that wishes to expand, um, but what it doesn't allow us to do is to put any money into infrastructure. Say we have a large corporation that wants to come and establish operations in Norfolk and we need to get sewer to them. We, at present, under our guidelines, could not use LB840 dollars toward that. We could not invest LB840 dollars toward natural gas capacity expansion. Um, there are a number of things that, under the plan, as originally approved by the voters um, in 2010, um, that we we haven't allowed ourselves to do. So this resolution would rescind those program guidelines at this point. Again, having us governed directly by the voter approved plan, which is Exhibit A attached to the resolution. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, we've also gone to the Chamber of Commerce and um, particularly the Action Council for input on this to make sure that uh, the business community was um, in favor of the action that we're proposing that the council take this evening and they were fully on board. Um, in addition, the, count, the Chamber of Commerce was very um, instrumental in getting LB840 passed in the community in the first place, so it was important that we went to them. Um, I'd also like to note that Dave Koppel is here um, and wanting to speak in favor of the rescission of the guidelines in addition, but first I'm happy to answer any questions. Courtney, maybe <clears throat> explain a little bit how this is evolving because of state statutes at the state level, how mm -hmm. it has changed since we approved it, and give a little explanation of that. Sure, very good point. Um, LB 840 is continually amended and they're opening up to additional uses, and so if we, if we restrict ourselves um, with the guidelines, we wouldn't be able to take advantage of additional uses. Now we'll have to amend the plan um, to take advantage of some of those um, subsequent um, amendments. But again, we're taking a look at you know, how do we make this as flexible as possible? How do we use this to the greatest potential for the community so that we can expand our economic base? Any other questions for Courtney? So, Courtney, it's, uh, we're living within the guidelines. That's, you know, you've mentioned that several times, and I, I can only assume that, that uh, as you've come on board and, you, and you've looked at how we can go out and try to do the economic development, that that flexibility is key in you mm -hmm. doing your job for the community. Would that be a fair statement? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. absolutely. And the end goal um, is to increase the number of jobs and to increase the investment. Uh, that we have capital investment, et cetera, that we have in this community. The way that the guidelines restricted things, it was tied very specifically to job creation. And what we've realized is there are a few steps that come before that in many instances. We can't recruit a company here um, to bring us a 
a number of new jobs unless we have infrastructure in place. And if we don't have, you know, perhaps an additional funding source for some of that infrastructure, um, the jobs don't come. And so that's why we need additional flexibility. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dave? Madam Mayor, members of the council, my name is Steve Koppel. I am the past chairperson of the Action Council of the Norfolk Area Chamber of Commerce. The Action Council, by unanimous motion, m moved and unanimously uh, approved the concept of rescinding the guidelines that Courtney has outlined for you and discussed with you. We think the state statutes provide a sufficient framework for you. We also are of the opinion that it will enable the city and economic development to accomplish the objectives and goals that the voters voted on when they passed this in 2010. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I thought it was important to be here so that the council knew that the, the Chamber of Commerce, the Action Council, and the business community in Northeast Nebraska support the idea. I appreciate that too, Dave. I think it is important. And certainly you being here and, and making that statement um, recognizes that it's you're, you're wearing the hat not only of the chamber, but as a person of business here in Norfolk and, and certainly a leader in the community. Yeah. So, And for the, I know this count, many of the council members know this. In fact, you all do. <laughs> the Action Council is comprised of representatives of industries such as Nucor, Norfolk Iron and Metal, Affiliate Foods, Faith Regional, uh, many other smaller business and many other government officials. So. It's a wide range and a wide spectrum that's represented by that group. And so they all stand here before you tonight with unanimity in support of the, in support of the idea. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments, Council? I just want to make a quick comment. If everybody remembers when we voted on LB 840, the Action Council and the Chamber was our partner and helped push this through. And so with their recommendation, I would support this. Very good comment. They were instrumental. So, all right. Then I would believe without any further discussion then, let's vote. All council members voting in the affirmative resolution 2013-13 is adopted. All right. I am going to, as I'm looking at this, <laughs> I'm not quite sure that on that consent agenda, I noted deletion of item 27 and 31. I don't remember if I stated that. So if not, um, we pulled item number 27 and 31 for further information that was needed by staff. So if I can record that and that makes us legit, I guess. Okay. All right. Seeing nothing else on the agenda then, we're adjourned. I don't know that I did. <laughs> <laughs>